Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So I think we're finally out of this nasty winter weather that we've had that seems like it's gone on for 13 or 14 months. 85, 86 degrees today. Temperature tomorrow is supposed to be about the same. Just looked at the 10 day, no freezing weather, nothing below 32 um, within the next 10 days. But that's not what I wanna talk about. So we're a little over halfway finished with our spring farrowing. We got, we've had five pigs that have, that have farrowed now. So I wanna go through the numbers. I wanna talk about what the experience has been so far, how many piglets we've had, how many stillborns, how many deaths. Talk about some interesting things that have popped up during this whole deal. So we're gonna go over some of those numbers uh, here in just a minute. I also wanna take you down. Um, David and Ashton and Nick moved the boards for me yesterday. I had some work stuff that I had to do. So those guys jumped in there and got the boards moved. Picked a great spot, but I wanna show you what the pigs have done to that area and what has come back as a result of those pigs are running a group of pigs across the area where we've got the boars at now. So it's pretty pretty interesting results. I think you're gonna be interested to gonna be interested to see that. So hang out with us for a little while. Who knows what else we're gonna talk about? Um I'll show you a pair of shoes I just wore out. Y'all think this is funny. But anyway, stick around with us for a little bit and uh let's talk about all kinds of stuff on the farm today. So before we get into all that, uh, I want to show y'all, I don't know why I thought you'd be interested in this, a pair of boots. I bought these. These are Rocky brand boots, and I've wore Rockies in the past whenever I worked uh, EMS, um, just black tactical style boots. And they always lasted pretty good, but farming is hard on shoes. Um, like I say, I bought these about two years ago. Daily, just daily shoes, wore them every day. And as you can see here, the soles have completely separated now. Uh, you step in uh, any kind of water and <laughs> your socks are wet that's one and the other one it's not separating quite as bad but it's about to get there thing about shoes nowadays that don't seem like they can repair them much um back in the day you know you could get a pair of shoes resold i don't i don't think these could even get resold but anyway if you've got a good recommendation for a pair of work boots um for farm work leave that in the description down below and uh yeah Time for some new shoes. So like I was saying a minute ago, I um, had a lot of work stuff going on yesterday. So David and Nick and uh, Ashton built a new paddock for the uh, for the boars, and we've moved them over um, into this spot here. And they came from here, and they've, they've moonscaped this pretty good. This was really overgrown with a lot of briar. There wasn't any wasn't really anything of value here um, when these boys hit that spot. So we've pulled them off uh, and moved them on a new spot. So they came over here. And this is an area where we had some pigs last fall, probably around September. So it's been about six months since we had anything here. Um, single strand, just like we always do. Y'all remember Jack, Hamlet over there, and then we got the Bluegrass Brothers, Lester and Earl. So <clears throat> put them over here. This was an area where we had uh, dug up a bunch of trash, a bunch of old construction debris. Jack, watch out. A bunch of construction debris. Quit. And uh, we'd cleaned some of that out, but these boys are already digging up some more that we had missed. So I'm going to have to get out of the pen. These boys are about to just wear me out. So came in single strand, uh, ran this on an area where we had had the pigs again last fall. And y'all, what we noticed was back here in the back, um, we've got some beautiful silvo pasture coming back in. And what the pigs had done last year was had come in, cleaned out a lot of the understor understory. Um, we knocked down some of the just small scrub stuff um, and got it out of the way so that we could get some sunlight down on the ground. And now we've got some really, really nice grass coming up. And this gang here is now getting to enjoy the fruits of uh, those pigs' labor. We, let's see if I can find a good example here. Year before last, 
Um, we had some beavers in here and they were gnawing down some trees. Back through here, this is where we had the piglets, had some pigs last year coming in beautiful. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous grass, nice and thick, going to get even better. Um, we were even talking about doing a little bit of fancy fencing work in here. And uh, after we get these guys moved out, give it a little bit of time for some rest and uh, bringing the sheep in here and letting the sheep graze on this because this is some good forage right here. I mean, these, I think the sheep would make some pretty short work of this, but look at this, this is gorgeous. Beautiful back here. Right next to the creek, we've got a little, we've got a little creek back here that dissects the, uh, dissects our property. Uh, just runs across the back side. And then we actually have another four acres uh, on the back side of the creek over there. So got a little water here. Got some wooded area back there. Have not been able to access this like we would like. We'd like to have a bridge. Bridges are expensive. Or we need to ford this creek um, somehow that's dry. We do have, there is a low water spot on up the, uh, on up the creek there that we can get across with like the side by side and that kind of thing but would be a little bit difficult, I think, with a trailer trying to move pigs back and forth. So still got a little bit of infrastructure to figure out on that side, but uh, this back here would be a great spot for some pigs. But until then, we're gonna take advantage of what we got. And uh, we got some nice, nice area back here for these guys. What you doing, Hammy? What you doing there, bud? I remember Hamlet. This old boy, he is, he's a chunk. I mean, he's, a, he's just a fine specimen. Gorgeous pig. We're, I'm really looking forward to putting him in with some, with some gilts. See what he can do. Been a few days since we done a uh, formal pig video, piglet video. Uh, I did do a short the other day. I was having a little withdrawals from not doing one, so I've been able to temper that for a couple days. But uh, piglet group. So we are a little over halfway through with our farrowing. We've had uh, five of our eight pregnant pigs, uh, either gilts or sows, um, have given birth now. And so we've got little piglets just running all over the place out here. Look at these guys. Now we've got some really good looking, really good looking piglets uh, in the mix here. Um, for those of you keeping score, this is the one that we've referred to as bad mama. She's the one that gave birth to uh, 11 and seven were dead when we came down the next morning because we think she was up wandering around while she was having piglets. But uh, see, she's got a crowd nursing on her now. Three females and one male nursing on her right there. So we got piglets everywhere, great color. Everybody's looking good. That's here. Um, hey, bud. So right here, this is uh, the last one of our gilts uh, that has not given birth yet. She's due in about um, 10 or 11 days, I guess now. So she's getting close. We got piglets everywhere. Lots of color. Don't have a count on males versus females. So we're not sure how many males versus females that we have. Hey guys. <laughs> 
So real quick before we start talking about um, our numbers on pastured piglets, May the 16th, we're gonna be having a pastured pig workshop right here at Sheraton Park Farms. If you're interested in getting into pastured pigs on your farm or homestead, or if you've been doing pigs for a little while and you wanna come out and see another farm and learn how we do things here, we'd love to have you. Two parts for the day. First half is gonna be in the classroom. We're gonna talk about everything from piglet selection, artificial insemination, breeding, all the way to cut sheets and getting those pork chops and bacon in your freezer. Second half of the day, gonna be out in the field. We'll be doing some fencing stuff. We'll be doing some training, weaning pins uh, demonstrations, and we should have some piglets ready for castration. So we'll be doing a castration demonstration. Learn how to castrate your own pigs. That'll save you a bunch of money on expensive vet bills uh, if you're gonna turn your boars into barrows. We'll be having a farm to table meal. Everything will be um, from right here on the farm. So May the 16th, 2021, information is in the description down below. Come on out, be with us. We'd love to have you and talk all things pasture pigs. Okay, so let's talk some numbers and sort of where we're at and what the experience has been so far, what the numbers look like in terms of births, deaths, stillborns, and all that kind of thing. So one of the things that I've always said is that I was gonna be completely open, open, honest, and transparent about what goes on on this farm. So the numbers I'm gonna give you is exactly what's happened. Um, these are certainly not the results that we had hoped for, but um, with that, with one outlier, if, if the circumstances had been different, we would be in a completely different situation. So overall, what have we got? Um, real quick, I'm gonna run through birth totals. This is the number of piglets that have been born. Um, and then we'll get to stillborns, deaths, and what we've got that survived here in just a second. Uh, first pig gave birth to 10. Second one, excuse me, first gilt gave birth to 14. The second gave birth to 10. The third gave birth to 11. The fourth gave birth to seven. And then the fifth gave birth to 11. So all told, we've had 53 piglets born on the farm here this spring during our spring farrowing. Out of that 53, um, three were stillborn, that we know were stillborn, um, and then we've had 16 to die. So that leaves us with 34 live pigs. Now, let's talk about the ones that have died. And out of the ones that have died, uh, we had the one mama that gave birth to 11 and only four survived. She's the one that it looked like she had gotten up and wandered around while she was giving birth. Um, and just basically she she gave birth to piglets all over the pasture so we're, we're not sure what happened that happened late at night again seven of those were dead um, had that not happened we would be in a completely different situation but it is what it is and we are going to learn from that uh, situation figure out how to do that better going forward and see if we can improve our odds next time so we had the seven from the one that we're again we're calling her bad mama i don't know that that's a fair that's a fair uh name to put on her but that's that's just what we've named her we had one that we lost we think due to weather uh died uh one night during a bad rainstorm everybody else survived that's the only thing we can attribute that to certainly might have been rolled on might have been laid on don't know but we had one that we lost due to uh bad weather we had one runt that we had taken to the house uh, that was a fair to thrive down here on the pasture. We took it to the house, bottle fed it for a couple of days. It ended up dying. Don't know what happened. It was one of the very smallest pigs that uh, was given birth to, and it was just a runt. It died. So not sure what happened. Um, we had one pig that we think had one of the tire feeders dropped on it. Came out one morning. It was laying up and under a tire feeder. We don't know if one of the girls was eating picked that thing up while some piglets were around and came down and fell on it um, but we had one piglet that was underneath the feeder one morning since then we have taken the tire feeders out we've replaced them with just a number of bowls uh, until these piglets get a little bit bigger um, so that they can get out of the way or if a tire feeder lands on them it's not gonna kill them so we've we've taken the tire feeders out <clears throat> and replaced those with bowls uh, for the for the short term we had one piglet that got stepped on. We were out here with the pigs one day. One of the mamas got startled. She stepped on a piglet and killed it right there. So we, we saw that one happen. Um, and then we had another one this morning. And this one was kind of interesting to me. I'm not sure what happened. Had an open laceration um, on its right side. Um, it was an open it was an open laceration and there was it looked what appeared to be either part of the bowel or part of its liver that was protruding through the uh, through the open wound. 
don't know if that was a injury from a mom stepping on it um they had been down under an old cedar tree that had fallen over it's got some pieces of limb sticking out don't know if it got maybe you know partially impaled on part of a limb if it was another piglet that had stepped on it and cut it with a hoof don't know what happened but that piglet i saw it yesterday and saw that it had the open wound came back to get it and it had kind of disappeared in the group and whenever could get it back and then this morning uh, we came out and found it dead so that is uh seven eight nine ten eleven seven eight nine ten eleven so that's 12 of the 16 that have died that we can kind of account for the the reason uh, uh or the rationale of what happened the rest of them you know are piglets that we've just found in the nest uh, for example we did find one uh, little boar piglet a couple of days ago big healthy guy chunky good size no obvious signs of injury or trauma or anything there so don't know what happened uh to it but uh we did have a, a little boar piglet that was uh, dead in the nest and then there have just been a couple others that we found uh, that we found dead as well so but overall um 34 still alive um we've lost uh 16 dead three stillborn so you know the numbers certainly are not where we would want them to be right now we're averaging about seven we're averaging about seven piglets per pig um on the ones that are that are alive and still here three to go so we're hoping for good numbers from them um so that's where we're at on the numbers so let's talk a little bit about piglet sales we've had a lot of folks reach out to us about piglet sales let's talk about piglet sales um what's going on there what we think we're going to be able to do um and how the piglet sales may end up working out now i have had a couple of questions about um these piglets and the fence <laughs> and so we don't try to contain the piglets um as you can see there the fence is tall enough right here for them to uh go in and out and we've come out in the morning middle of the day and they're out here wandering around in the in the trail so uh, we don't try to contain them they're not going to wander far from mom um, we are going to start feeding them outside of uh, outside of the paddock here in a couple days so that they can get used to um, eating a little bit of feed we'll worm them at that time um, and then that will set them up for um, the catch pen later on when it's time to uh, start weaning them off of mom and doing castration and all of that kind of stuff so we don't try to contain the piglets we just let them kind of have run of the place and they uh, they sort of come and go and do as they please so let's talk about piglet sales for just a second and first off let me say that i am just blown away by the amount of interest that we've had in folks that wanted to buy piglets from us um i think i've got a running list of no less than 40 folks that are interested in buying uh you know some volume of some number of piglets off of us and uh i just that's that's amazing to me so let me say i, I really appreciate everybody's interest in in wanting to buy piglets <clears throat> and we think we are going to have a few for sale um but to say that i'm going to be able to fill orders from 40 folks there's just there's not going to I just don't think there's going to be any way that we could even get close to doing that taking into consideration um, some pre-existing deals that we had uh, with a couple of folks and then what we're going to need here uh, to continue our operation in both retail sales and in the breeding side so I'm trying to figure out a way right now that I can as fairly as possible um, begin to fill piglet orders um, Again, there's not, not there's not going to be any way we're going to be able to fill all of them uh, this spring. Uh, we are going to we are planning to farrow again later this year, so I'm going to keep that list, and you know we're going to continue to reach out to folks as we have pigs available. Um, again, as fairly as I can figure out how to do, I've got a couple of ideas on how we're going to how we might try to manage that. But um, if I don't get to you uh, and we're not able to supply you with piglets this year um, or this spring. Um, I certainly apologize for that. Uh, we want to try to serve as many folks as we can and get you guys uh, piglets because we know we know what it's like. We know how tough it is to find good quality piglets um, at a reasonable price, piglets that uh, are, are well suited for this type of environment and do well out on pasture. So stay tuned. If you've sent me an email um, expressing interest, keep an eye on your email. Uh, we're going to send out some information on how we're going to manage the piglet sales uh, coming up here hopefully in a few days. Uh, we've still got a few logistics to work out on exactly how we're going to do that so 
If you're interested in piglets and you've sent me your contact information, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be sending you an email pretty soon letting you know uh, how we're going to manage that. So there it is. It's kind of the down and dirty on uh, how our numbers have flushed out so far. Again, we've got uh, three girls to go, big mama, little mama, and then we've got this real dark pig up here. Sonna was saying today she thinks she may make up for the pig losses so far. She's big as a house. Great old big girl, and she's still got, she's got 10 or 12 days to go. So uh, excited to see what her numbers are going to look like. And then big mama and little mama, you know, they're, they're big old creatures anyway, so we're hoping for good numbers on them. But anyway, I think that's going to do it. I'm going to post a link to a couple of videos over here, some other stuff we've got going on. If you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Give us the thumbs up. Um, we appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.